Hi there, welcome to the tutorial on cricket synthesis, where we'll look at various techniques of synthesized cricket sounds. I encourage you to watch the entire video as in the first part, we will discuss the theoretical side and the second part, we will run through several practical methods. The sound produced by crickets is typically the result of stridulation, which is the rubbing of the four wings against each other. There is said to be a series of teeth underneath the upper wing that are rubbed with the plectrum of the other wing. These are amplified additionally by the wing vibration. One chirp syllable is the sound of one open and close of the four wings. It has been interesting to note the vast range of sounds that we can perceive as cricket chirps. Perhaps the sounds I've produced here are moderately realistic, but they were also very easy to create with just some brief knowledge about the spectrum. There's a few reasons why we have this flexibility. There are over 900 species of crickets on the planet which offers our ears a great variety of sounds. The cricket calls are usually heard at a distance from the source, or not usually close proximity, giving some leeway for how much detail we need. The cricket chirps are relatively simple, being either constant humming or individual chirp syllables at a set frequency. There are mainly two kinds of chirps to explore. The first is made up of a cluster of harmonics in a narrow frequency range. and the second, more challenging type, has only a few distinct harmonics. Although many of these species communicate ultrasonically, exceeding 20 to as high as 100,000 Hz, the main audible range is typically from 2 and 8 kHz. In this video, we'll outline Oscillator and additive synthesis, ring modulation, frequency modulation, and filter modulation. Let's start with the easiest methods and move to advanced. In all cases, ensure you have a steep attack and steep release envelope as we are dealing with fast chirping. This patch is a sine wave with ring modulation applied. The carrier frequency is set to 2 kHz, whereas the modulator is about 35 Hz difference. In our case, we have applied the triangle wave as a modulator, which adds many sidebands. Lastly, the pulse wave LFO is for the fast chirping. The most basic result though is to use a sine wave, which results in a mere two sidebands. In alchemy, I'll start with two sine waves and show you the similarity. We can use the ring mod filter here as shown with a single sine wave. The ring mod frequency is only 36 Hz in this case. In Massive, we use a sine wave by choosing the sine triangle wavetable and then choosing the minimum wave position. Here I'm using the note C6 with ring mod at negative 60. But experiment with increasing the mod pitch and mix level.
The LFO applied is called square uni. Using the phase or FM also creates a range of sidebands. FM synthesis is a way to add more sidebands, although here we can extend the sidebands with the FM index. We can do this until it gets as wide as we like. In this example, I'll have the sine wave close to 2 kHz and modulate it at about 70 Hz. The FM index is about 2. Increasing the amount results in a wider band, almost sounding like cicadas. This humming was made with an additive oscillator, starting with a basic cluster of 11 harmonics, with a fundamental of 63 Hz. By analysing the frequency cluster with high FFT window, we'll find a range of bumps in the spectrum, and the distance between each bump is the approximate multiple, or base frequency. I found that frequency between 40 and 70 are good to work with, but higher amounts can sound good too. From the perspective of granular synthesis, we can use the tiny grains as individual chirps. With a basic wave, with only the lower four harmonics, I'm running this through Absinthe's etherizer. Here I'm using the grain duration of 1.7% to introduce gaps. And a resonant filter frequency. Transposing the tone off pitch also had a pleasing side effect. From here we can modulate the grain rate for an organic chirp speed. A more distinct example is the house cricket, which has the first four harmonics intact. But needed a custom envelope built for the distinct chirp syllables. Here there is ramp envelopes and pauses at about 17 syllables a second. The pitch is also enveloped to fluctuate rapidly. The pitch variations are like mini decrescendos, although very subtle. This mole cricket example contains a similar cluster to an earlier example, but also has a steep bandpass filter applied for a main resonance. These harmonic curves can still be elaborated as the recorded spectrum is extensive. Mysteriously, the resonance is not actually that predominant in the recording, but it sounds very acceptable. Using Alchemy's additive engine, we can recreate this spectrum as well. Access the edit menu once additive mode is selected.
moving or modulating the filter cutoff can give some expression. With this similar frequency cluster here, a more cloudy humming style is achieved with a rapidly fluctuating cutoff frequency, which is also benefited by the complex LFO shape. This site at Avisoft, mentioned in a research paper, has fantastic resources on bioacoustics, which I explored to create these sounds. Both source recordings and basic spectrums are available for listed species. Once again, I hope you enjoyed this. Please show your support by joining my email newsletter. You will receive a free cricket synth tool to create an endless variety of chirps. In my next video we'll look at some more advanced techniques. Stay tuned!